topping the Sportsmax zone for this Friday, and we're kicking off with uh, football from Jamaica. Rounds three and four of the CONCACAF Nations League are around the corner, and the reggae boys who sit atop Group B in the League A have named their 23-man squad for their matches against Grenada and Haiti on the 12th of October and three days later on the 15th as well. Among the notable absentees is centre-back Ethan Pinnock, midfielder Casey Palmer due to injury, and starlet forward Dijon Whisper-Richards, who, according to head coach Hamer Halgrimson, is not playing enough football to be selected. Now replacing them is a returning Mikel Antonio, Dexter Lemikisa, Mikhail Michael Hector, and the 18-year-old midfielder Karoy Anderson. Now ahead of the fixtures, Hal Grimson emphasized the importance of the team getting positive results in the two fixtures. For so many reasons, this is important for our team. Number one, to grow, to play in tournaments that really will test us, to play against the best teams. So it's, it's a, a so important step for developing a good team for the World Cup in 226, so we can qualify for the World Cup in 226. So we want to put all our emphasis on this, on this uh, camp coming up to secure the playoff possibility. And from then on, hopefully, we can, we can take that opportunity and win the playoff. Yeah, Amar, Hal Grimson there. He is from Iceland. He is Jamaica's national coach. Um, any pressure on the reggae boys to win these games convincingly? They're already top of the group. Yeah, for me, there will always be pressure on the team, Lance, until they are uh, accomplishes what they set out to do and when I looked at the squad some of the omissions for me were very very glaring and I say that because I saw no Ravel Morrison Dijon Whisper was one of the players I was looking forward to see as well and I feel as if you know I have a bit more questions because even the reasoning for Dijon not making the team I think is a bit questionable because not playing enough matches, which matches are he being, is he being judged by? And why not give him the opportunity? He has been given the opportunity before. What do you think about his exclusion and the reason that we got for him being well, excluded? Well, it, it, it brings questions because when he had been selected initially, he hadn't been playing a lot of football. In fact, those detractors who felt that he should not have been in the squad um, felt that he hadn't been playing enough football, especially because at the time, Coach Hal Grimson had said that the reason why Ravel Morrison wasn't in is because he was pretty much inactive. So a lot of fans were saying, well, if Ravel Morrison isn't in the squad because he's inactive, uh, Dijon Whisper Richards is also inactive, so how is he in? But I, I, I get the feeling that the coach knows or feels he has seen the teenager's ability and has seen enough of him to know that he is in his future plans. And uh, Dijon Whisper Richards makes way now for other players. Um, and Mikel Antonio is now back, and he is, you know, the foremost frontman for the Jamaica team. So maybe, and Whisper Richards is with Chelsea and hasn't really been playing. So I, I, I wouldn't read too much into it, quite honestly, because I think um, Richards has shown that he has a lot of ability, scope for improvement, and he is definitely in the coach's future plans so I don't think his omission from this squad is any indication that um, Richards isn't isn't you know foremost on the coaching staff's mind right and on that note the Charlton Athletic pair Karoy Anderson and Michael Hector they've both been included in the reggae boy setup have you seen enough of them to say well, Hector what they is bring? Hector is a he regular four yeah. yeah and he's regularly playing League One in England at the moment but Anderson well, I don't know much about Anderson. 19. Yeah. London um, born. Yeah, but I'm, I don't I, I don't know a lot about his ability. Yeah. So I think this is an opportunity for him to um, show his his worth. But uh, Hector makes a return to the Jamaica setup for the first time in several years. Not a fan favorite of the Jamaicans, I might add. Um, had regularly played um, a holding midfield position, sometimes in a central defensive position. So I'm anxious to see what he will deliver in his latest in here. But he makes a return to the Reggae Boys squad after a few years uh, being out. Yeah, but he last he, played in 2021. Right. But he's a, a regular in England's uh, League One for Charlton Athletic. So he's busy. He's playing a lot of competitive football. So um, let's see what he has to offer. But I said he has never been a fan favorite of, of the uh, Jamaican football supporters. So um, 
Uh, obviously, his reintroduction into the squad suggests that Coach Hal Grimson has him in his plans to some extent. And this is an opportunity for Hector to show, to show what he's got. He was an original Chelsea player, had been out on loan, several loan, um, loan stints. And um, let's see what he has to offer. And, you know, you asked me the question at the top of the segment about, you know, how important is it that they top the group? So we'll reiterate that they're at the top of Group B of League A. The thing about this is it depends on how you finish is who you play, who will be your opponent, right? So if the reggae boys, um, the top two teams, so if they finish in the top two, they will advance to the quarterfinals and they will have to play either Canada or Costa Rica in the quarterfinals. So I don't know if they would feel it might be easier to play Canada or Costa Rica because if they finish second, they would have to play either USA or Mexico. Mm. So Well, they, they would want to win the group. Right. With, with that on the table, they would want to win the group because um, Costa Rica and Canada would be considered as easier opponents than either Mexico or the USA. So they would want to, they would want to top the group to ensure that they play the number two team um, and, and, you know, not, not the USA or Mexico. Do you think this team is complete and will put up a good competitive match against the teams that they'll be facing? I think so. Um, Haiti is strong, a very, very strong team, as the Jamaicans saw the last time. So I think Haiti will be a huge test for them. Um, the Grenadians, though, at the moment, are, are not at the reggae boys' level. So I'd expect the Spice, Spice Boys to have uh, difficulty um, contending with the Jamaicans. But the Haiti game would be tough. I it's a tougher of the two games. I can't help but mention this because it's, it keeps making the headlines that Mason Greenwood should be ready with his passport by the <laughs> next window. Yes. Lance, are you taking that seriously or do you think you're going to just wait and see? I'm going to just wait and see. It, it is, I, I suspect that the Jamaica coaching staff would be eager to have Mason Greenwood in their setup because of his, his quality. And um, if Mason Greenwood is in a reggae boy squad along He's with a Mikel Antonio, um, it, it, would, it would, first of all, excite the fans because he is a high-quality player, a, a Premier League player of, of, of worth and, and quality. So, but I would just wait and see because I, I hate to speculate on these things. But I do get the feeling that behind the scenes, the um, Jamaican coach, Hal Grimson, is eager to have Mason Greenwood as part of the setup. So it's up to the Englishman if he is really serious um, about uh, wearing a reggae boy shirt in international football, that, that is, is, is still to be decided. Yeah, I think it will be an exciting matchup. We, they have two games coming up, Lance, and we look forward to see how coaches' choices step up and, of course, deliver. He's been working with the team for some time, so now you know, he, there's no room for major criticism. We can't say, it, we can't say that you know, Coach Joss got the team now I think he knows the system. He should be able to know what he requires of the player, the mm. type of football that he'd like to play. So this time I think he'll be judged hard. Yeah, and, and the fact is that um, Hal Grimson has been pretty steady with, with his roster. And um, uh, I think it is good that he's not shifting too far from his nucleus of players. So as far as World Cup qualification for 2026 is concerned, I think the reggae boys are on a good path. We still have a lot more to come on the Sportsmax Zone and a lot more football as well back on the other side of the break.